Good morning. Good morning, influencers. Good morning. Good morning. I am super, super excited to be here to share some inspiration with you this morning. So first I want to say good morning. Happy Saturday to you all. I hope you are have uh, planned an amazing day to enjoy this beautiful weather. Um, I just want to say last night's event, the ladies fiesta was off the chain. It was off the chain. If you missed it, I am um, sorry. I apologize. It was off the chain, but we are looking to have the ladies fiestas every uh, quarter again. So stay tuned. Be on the lookout for what's to come. However, this morning, this morning, we are discussing the topic, you can survive it. If you're on here, please share this out because this morning we are going to have our special guest, Miss Bree Love, to come on here just to share some of her story um, and give you some encouragement as well as inspiration to know that you can survive it. So if you would, please share this live out. Tell a friend to tell a friend that we are here every Wednesday and every Saturday morning, uh, every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. and every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. I am Shay. I am just here to share this platform. We want to hear from each and every one of you. We want to connect with you because it's your testimonies. It's your stories. It's your voice that's going to awaken the next nation. So I realize this is not something that we can do alone. We need one another. We can't do it alone. Regardless as to what we want to believe, we cannot do it alone. So I'm going to bring our special guests on this morning. As I say, share this live out. Tell a friend and tell a friend. Good morning, Ebony. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to bring Miss Bree on now. You, if you are ready, y'all clap it up for her as we bring her in now. I'm super, super excited. You can survive it. You can survive it. You can survive it. So, Bree, you should be good to play. Um, while we are waiting for her to come through, I just say, there she goes. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? So, I first of, first of all, I want to say thank you for accepting the invitation to come on to speak to this topic. I really, really appreciate it. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn it right over to you for you to just share some of your stories, some of your testimony on the topic, you can survive it. Just encourage the viewers, encourage those that will be coming back to listen to the replay that they can survive whatever it is they're currently facing or whatever it is they will face. So I'll turn it right over to you. You can just introduce yourself and just tell us, I mean, share some, share some of your testimony, your insight on how you survived it. And while you know it's, also possible for them to survive it. Amen, amen. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Bree. I go by Bree Love on Facebook. Um, Shay, thank you so much for allowing me to have this opportunity to speak. I'm excited to be on here. I'm a little nervous, so if I start stuttering, y'all don't judge me. But um, I just wanted to come encourage someone today to let you know that you can survive it, you know. Um, growing up, living in poverty and living in, in the projects. And I grew up without a father, basically. Um, my mother was a single parent who raised my sister and I. It, it was rough. My sister, she had her father in her life, but mine was nowhere to be found. So um, it was kind of tough, you know, getting through life with not having that parent um, that second parent involved and, 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 and then when it got to the point where I was able to like do relationships and I got to the age, it kind of trickled into everything that I was kind of working on pretty much. So I feel like a lot of my issue when it came to relational aspects was the fact that I never had a male figure in my life and, and I never had that man saying, you know, what to do and what not to do. And I kind of always seen my mother just doing it on her own. So I became a very independent woman. And, and, it, and of course, again, it was, you know, some some issues with that. Um, not only the fact that I was independent, but when I did get into relationships, you know, 
I, I, I kind of sought love and I was seeking for that love because I didn't have it growing up. And that becomes an issue when, you know, when you're trying to allow somebody, the right person to come into your life. So um, regardless to say, again, growing up without a father wasn't the end of the world, you know, because here I am now. Um, like I said, it messed with some of my relationships, uh, but at the same time, I survived it. You know, like I, I allowed things to happen that I feel like I shouldn't have allowed happen. And maybe these things wouldn't have happened if, and I always thought about that. I always talked to my mom, like, well, maybe some of the things that I go through or that I went through wouldn't have happened if I had that father figure. Um, but nevertheless, I have God, you know, God is my father. He, he allows me to get through every single thing. Um, he allows me to make decisions. And of course, some of those decisions might not always be the best decision, but at the end of the day, it's a learning lesson. So I just come to encourage somebody on today that regardless of what you go through in your past, don't let your past dictate your future. Yes. Because none of that, that I went through is dictating what I'm doing now. Like I, I'm a, I'm a great mother to my daughter. You know, I, I do everything for her. I have a great career and I have a pretty content life at this moment, you know, and I feel like instead of sitting in sorrow, instead of feeling sorry about myself and instead of moping about not having a father, you know, I continue to press through that and continue to make a difference in, in my life and my child's life because it's not about me anymore. You know, I, ha I have a little one to look up that looks up to me. Um, so regardless of what you go through, a lot of people, a lot of people just stoke in their past, you know, and I feel like I can't speak for nobody. I can't tell nobody not to do that. I can just only encourage you that, you know, doing that is just going to make you weaker. Like if you continue to soak and emote and, and, and complain about things that happen instead of trying to make a difference in your life, you know, you're going to be stuck. And I don't want anybody to be stuck. I come to let somebody know that you can get through any situation with God on your side. Now, don't try to do it by yourself. That's it. <laughs> there's, been plenty, there's been plenty of times where I was just taking things into my own hands. And, and, and as I did that, I see that, you know, the outcome was affected negatively. You know, like I learned that I can't do nothing without God. And, and, and until you have that relationship with God or until you have that understanding, you know, it's kind of hard to even put this into perspective, but I, I greatly appreciate where he's taking me from to where he's carrying me now, you know, because I've been through a lot and this is just only a segment of what, you know, what I had to do in life. But again, you can survive it. Like you can get through it. Just continue to press. You may get weak at times. We are human. Our flesh, our flesh gets weak. That's what yeah. happens. But it's all in a matter of how you transition out of that weak stage, you know, don't, don't stay in bondage. Don't stay there. Like allow God to bring you out, find something that makes you happy, you know, find people that makes you happy. Don't surround yourself around negative people or negative situations. And I had to learn from that. I had to learn how to choose my friends or choosing my friends wisely. But, you know, I just, I thank God today because of all I went through, Shay, and you know, bits and pieces of even my, my domestic violence, of all of that, I survived it and I'm a living witness and a living testimony to tell anybody that they can do the same. Don't give up. God won't give up on you, so don't give up on God. That's good. Yes. Yes. So you said um, so much. And you know, this is true. Like, when we don't have that parent, we seek for that attention. We seek for that love. We seek to fulfill that loss, right? So mm -hmm. what I do want to ask you is when you began to seek for that love in your relationships um, and going through your domestic violence situation, how did it affect you when you were not getting the love that you were seeking for? Um, well, first of all, Shay, I fell in love too easily, too quickly. Mm -hmm. And again, it's because, I, it began this because I didn't know what, what that love looked like. I mean, you know, I never seen a set relationship, a stable relationship. And I know not all relationships are perfect, but I hadn't even seen any of that. So I fell in love too quickly. And it just got to the point where, you know, I thought this guy liked me or I, I felt like everything that he was saying was perfect. But 
everything just went over my head. It's like I just had this tunnel vision, like, oh, you know, it was all good and games until, you know, things started to really crack down and God really started to show me what was up because I wouldn't have noticed any of this unless he had pointed out some of these key factors and some of these men, some of these red flags. And, and, and by doing so, I made myself even more vulnerable because here I am and I will kind of like share my life with a guy and, and share what I went through and they would take advantage of that. Let me, let me encourage a woman on today. Do not tell a man what you're looking for in a relationship. <laughs> and I, I mean, men and women, because I feel like the minute you tell somebody, oh, this is what I'm looking for, they can play that part and they will play it well. Um, just knowing how to wait on God, and I'm still learning that, how to, like I, I've been single for ever since my domestic violence, but I'm learning how to just wait and let God lead every situation and, and not rush into a relationship where you think is love versus lust. Because I'll be honest, a lot of people can't distinguish that. Love over lust is a hard thing, especially when you're letting things get in the way. And, and again, this is all things that I'm, I'm learning from myself, all things that God has been showing me over the past few months, over the past few years. And, you know, we're going to get there. I'm going to yes. get there. I'm, you know, I'm not going to continue to keep going around this same mountain over and over again when I know what the mm. result is going to be. Like, no, like, I, 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 I can't do that. Good morning. Yes. So. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. Yes, ma'am, you are so right. And we've all been guilty of it, right? I'm married. I, I'm happily married. But I've also been guilty of it, too. A lot of times we fall so quick because we're trying to fill a void. And our vulnerability yeah. makes us susceptible to anything that someone's willing to give, to any attention. We start doing things. We start buying the attention, not even up from a man, but even from our friends, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you just want to be accepted. You want to be loved. And then it takes mm -hmm. to go through some things to realize, wait a minute, I was better off without anyway, right? So uh, yes. that was good. That was good. Now, let me ask you this. And this is my last question. Anyone that's watching, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments because at the end, we do go back, read comments. We go back and we read um, any um, questions that she may be able to answer or myself may be able to answer for you. So let me ask you this. Now having a daughter, right? Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself, it's her... Do you find yourself like looking at your daughter and seeing your image all over again? Like, I know what my daughter needs. I know what she wants. I know what I was needing at her age. And how are you allowing her to avoid some of the hurt and some of the trauma that you've gone through in order to protect her? Or do you have the open discussions with her to you know, affirm her that you are loved, regardless as to not getting into the details of the involvement of her father, but just how, as a mother, with you going through the things that you went through, are you now, what are you doing or how are you depositing into your child to prevent some of that same pain that she would experience? How are you doing that? Well, to be honest, Shay, and, and I don't mind freely speaking on it, my daughter knows her father. So that's that's yeah. number one. That's 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 what's different. Like I, I to this day I'm twenty eight years old and I still don't know who my biological father is. So my daughter knows her father. She has a relationship with him, but not as often as I, I want it to be, you know. And he's doing big things. He's across seas, but I try to like you said, you had mentioned earlier, just instilling it and having these open conversations with you like daddy is here you know daddy's just taking care of some business um so it's just the fact of trying to allow her father and her to build a relationship that's one of my key factors whether she has to call him every day whether he calls every day but i don't want her to get to the point where she doesn't know daddy anymore you know and 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 having that father figure and i can just i still see how it affect her at a very young age with him not being predominantly there but again i try to keep her involved uh, so my daughter plays a lot of sports, you know, I spend a lot of time with her and not just to cover up the fact that daddy's not there, but just to show her that there's so much more involved in it, you know, so I, I absolutely 
want to continue to allow her to have that relationship with her father. I will never take that away from him, regardless of what him and I go through. I don't care about that. It's all about co-parenting. Um, and as well as the things that I go through, I'm, I'm, I'm open and honest with her, you know, so she's been seeing, she's been seeing a lot of my hurt. She's been seeing a lot of my pain, but I explain things to her and explain that God got you. So that's her number one thing. She'll say, mommy, mommy, God got you. And she knows that. And just training her up to understand that God is going to be there regardless. Mm, that's good. That's good. So my last question, and I said that a while ago, but I do have another question. So having not having that male figure, was there ever a time in your life that you was able to get that male figure in an uncle, um, in a mentor, and you know, a teacher, a professor? And um, even with the absence of your father, I know you are a certified teacher. So could you talk about like your experience in college and your, your degrees? Like, tell us about that. So um, I had a few male figures in my life. Um, right now, my stepdad has been married to my mother for about 14, 15 years. My sister's dad, um, and he's watching now. Hey, Wayne, he helped raise me for a few years um, until you know, some, a situation with him and my mother were not together anymore. So, but it was different. You know what I mean? Like it was different from actually knowing who my real father was compared to these men who, who were being a part of my life. And I'm thankful for the both of them. I'm thankful for my stepdad now because he treats me as if he's my own or if I'm his child, like, and I haven't had that. So I don't really know how to react to certain situations when it comes to sharing things with him. Um, but as far as college level, um, I feel like I done, I did that thing, you know, and like, I see now I'm being a teacher, I haven't taught in the past year, but seeing some of my kids and what they go through and having that absent parent, whether it's a mother or a father, I just try to give them as much love as I possibly can, because that's all that they're seeking. They're seeking love, they're seeking attention, and whether it's, it, it's doing it in a negative way or, or, you know, in a positive way, that's what they need. And they just need to know that somebody out there really cares for them, regardless of them not having a mother or father. I didn't had plenty of students whose parents were incarcerated, you know, and I just try to continue to provide that hope because I don't know what it's like. I just know what it's like to have an absent parent. Yes. But when it comes to other things and, and of course, you know, I taught fourth grade and the bullying aspect and, and the kids are making fun of each other because they don't have their parents. I never went through that as a, at a young age. Like back in my day, like we didn't have all of those problems, but this new generation of, of, of kids who, who are making fun of each other because they don't have their parents or whatever the case may be. We just need more people to stand up and let them know that it's okay. Like, I made it. I made it living off of, you know, not having nothing. I made it living out of people's houses and being homeless. I made it because I still had that strong mother, that one strong individual, that person in my life who was there and God. God was there the entire time to keep me sane, to let me know that regardless of what you've been through, Bree, you know, you're going to overcome. You got this. Don't give up. Yes, ma'am. And that's exactly what I love. I love the fact that you have chosen a career path to give back, right? You have a deeper understanding of what a this generation is seeking because you know what you went through. However, now the 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 additions that's happening with the bullying, with you know the increased incarceration numbers and all of that, those are a, a, another or other extenuating extenuating factors that plays on a child's emotions. So just being in that classroom, having that other perspective, that different perspective helps that you to understand how to deal with each and every kid individually. So I appreciate the, the answers to those questions. Let me go back and read our comments. We have um, Miss Wolford say, yes, yeah, speak, Bree. Jocelyn said, girl, yes, hello. She loved that question. Okay, Elder Pritchett says, why do you think a lot of women stay in abusive relationships? They saw the signs, but they choose to stay. A lot of women and children have been killed because of that. Why do you think women 
choose to stay in abusive relationships? Well, me personally, I can't speak on every single individual or every single woman, but some of the some of my friends and my family members who who've been in this situation before, most of them said the fact that they had kids. Um, that wasn't my case, but the fact that they had kids and they don't they don't want to break up a happy home, but in the same time, you hear them constantly or see them crying, and and your kids begin to see that. So you staying in this abusive relationship because of your kids is hurting them even more than what it would do if you were to separate. Um, and again, that's just coming from my personal experience that I had with some of my friends. And say, I'll be honest, after my last situation and, and the guy put his hands on me, a couple weeks after that, I thought about going back to him. I really wow. did, and I'll be completely honest. But it was because he he filled that void that I was, you know, that I was seeking. Like he, he was, he was there taking care of me. He took care of finances and he took me places. And it was all of the material things that I was attracted to that was not good for me. So like, I thank God that I didn't go back because I wouldn't have survived it. I wouldn't have made it if I, if I had went back into that relationship, like, and I feel like everybody just has their own story. Everybody has their own reason of why they will go back, but don't, stay there like if he is abusing you or vice versa if a woman is abusing a man don't stay there and like she said she said so many people has died in a matter of somebody else's hands and we've seen that even in our community over the past two years how so many people have lost their life because they chose to stay in an abusive relationship don't do it it's not worth it. That's not love. And I tell my friends that all the time. If a man or a woman put their hands on you, that is not love. They can't tell you that they love you and they're beating you down or, or they're holding you down to where you, you have no power. That's not love. Love is, love is, God is love. God is love. That's good. So I just, you know, also kind of chime in. You're absolutely right. I've heard people say, you know, I don't want my kids to suffer, right? So a lot of times mothers, especially women, will take, and we'll, we'll take a couple blows so that our kids aren't in that pain. So they don't feel like, oh, mommy, it's your fault daddy left, you know? And while it's not good, it's unhealthy, and it's not right, women do it. And, you know, it's sad to say, because as Bree said, we don't know the damage that we're doing to that child because the reality is we're thinking that our children are asleep. We're thinking that, oh, they don't know anything about it until they get 18 or 19 and you sit them down and have a talk and then they let you know at the age of six, mom, I remember here, over here, when you arguing with them. Or mom, I remember, you know, they go on to say these different things and we was disconnected, but um, I just, you know, want to say in order to be able to go through any situation, especially experiencing that type of trauma or in an abusive relationship, ladies and men, because men also suffer abuse in relationships at the hands of women. We don't hear it often because men not just go say, oh, my wife beat me or, oh, you know, my girlfriend, she locked me in a closet because men don't want those things to mess with their pride. They don't want uh, another man to be like, oh my goodness, like, um, they don't want another man to be like, oh my goodness, um, you know, she she beat you? Like, what kind of man are you? They don't want to, to experience that. So instead, what they do is they don't talk about it. They suffer in silence. They So, you know, so I'm just saying that this thing isn't just one sided. Men also go through abuse. Men also suffer greatly at the hands of women as well. Women, we 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 don't mind talking about it. We like, he put his hands on me. Let me call my uncles. Let me call my brothers. Let me call whoever, because it's on and pop and it's war. Where a man will go through this trauma and he will not say anything at all. He will suffer in silence and will not say anything because. First of all, he feel like, oh, um, something's wrong with me because I'm seeking for help. So when we had, mm -hmm. you know, mental health, mental health awareness month, I just love it because when you look at it, men is the is the uh, prefix in mental health, men, and then health is also men's health matters too. Like 
they have mental mm -hmm. issues. They need um, those mental issues to be addressed. They also suffer at the hands of, you know, not just women, but even in, in, in their kids. Because women, sometimes mm -hmm. we, uh, as women, we can be a mess. We'll use the kids as a way to make the man suffer, right? So abuse mm -hmm. is not only, you know, me physically putting my hands on you. I know for me, I went through verbal abuse. Yes, yes. <laughs> You know, this lack of confidence, this lack of, uh, of self-esteem, all of these things. But I thank God, because like you said, Brie, the same way you survived it, I am I am here today to say I survived it. When I tell people yeah. I had low self-esteem, no confidence, they're like, what, you? They don't believe it. Mm -hmm. I was teased, oh, you're the fat girl. I was teased because mm -hmm. of my, I was teased because I grew up in a house, I was the baby girl, middle child of three. My my brother and my sister's fathers were involved. They were both their dads. They teased me. I love my siblings to death, but they teased me that I didn't have a father because my father was not present, right? So mm -hmm. I understand, and I'm telling you the same way you survived it. You didn't allow you not having that father figure in your life to keep you from obtaining any of your goals. You went to college. You obtained your degree, and you are a great, mm -hmm. not great mother but a beautiful person with a beautiful soul inside and out i'm super excited about mm -hmm. you know the god has in store for you and again thank mm -hmm. you just uh, for being a part of this conversation and i'll tell you um elder Cheryl, she said that's so true seeking love she said i've never met my father or any of his family she don't know any of them so, you know, again, you know, how inspired is all about you being inspired to inspire someone else. Talk about your story. Your story has significance, substance that's going to help the next person to get over what they're currently facing or what they are looking to face in the future. She says you have a beautiful, beautiful young lady. You have a voice to help others. So, yes, Latanya, um, emotional abuse is real. So we thank you all for tuning in again, Brie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As I share with you, we have, uh, you know, we're doing these live broadcasts. We're building up the momentum to actually host a um, to host a conference, a one day or two day conference where we'll have a panel list, and people will pay, of course, buy tickets to attend, and you will be a part of that panel list to say, "Listen, I survived it, and because I went through this with the help of God, right? Because as you said." You had to find that father in God. You know, when you mm -hmm. couldn't find no one else, and even with that, it's hard because, you know, spiritually, people are like, you know, God is real, but I can't physically touch him. I can't, you know, mm -hmm. say, Dad, let's have a daddy-daughter dance or a daddy-daughter date without people looking at me like I'm crazy because, you know, mm -hmm. I carry him where I go. You know, I said it lives before, when you show up, the glory shows up because you are a glory carrier, right? So I just yeah. thank you again for coming on, and I am looking forward to collaborating even more with you. I appreciate you stopping and taking the time out of your day after making the commitment to say, listen, I'm busy, but I made this commitment, and I'm going to follow through. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and I look forward to collaborating with you more. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen that are watching this live broadcast, we officially have products in. As you see, I am rocking my Wow Inspired hat. It has our tagline, Inspire the Influencer and You. I am an influencer. I also, we also now officially have t-shirts. So our shirts are in. The shirt is inspired and it has the tagline, Inspire the Influencer and You. We have mugs for all my coffee drinkers. Same thing. Our, our, our logo is there. The tagline is there. And listen, y'all, we have, you know, a combination of um, other items that I sold last night, but <clears throat> I'll post them in the Wow Inspired community. And again, this is a share platform. This is not about Shay. God gave me the vision to push it. But listen, it's you all. It's all of us that make this brand. It's all of us that have to have the mindset, God, I am inspired. So it is my due diligence to inspire someone else. So we are here every Wednesday night <clears throat> at 10. Beautiful God bless you. Love you too, our sis. Um, we are here every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. and every Saturday morning at 10 a.m.
And I I just thank God. I, I really thank God. I thank God for just me being obedient this time. Me being obedient this time. And again, this is a shared platform. We want to hear from you um, as, as God has um, given me certain individuals to go to, to invite as a live guest um, to share the platform throughout their lifetime and the things that God has allowed them to overcome. I told the ladies last night, listen, if you have something that's tugging and pulling on you, stop sitting around waiting for all of the per for waiting for the perfect time, waiting for this and that to come together. Start where you stand. Listen, that thing blessed me when God gave it to me. And it blessed them last night too. So my inspiration and encouragement to you, as Bree said, as as she survived it, so can you. You have the ability so, to survive it. And when I say it, I say it once, I say it again. Start where you stand. There is an influencer down on the inside of you. Everyone is not called to speak in front of, you know, thousands, millions of people. And that is okay. While you have some people that just love the background. While you have some people that just love just to, to, to stay in, um, in, the back, in, the, in the back. And they don't want to be seen. But I do want to tell you that your story has significance and that significance has a substance that's going to help somebody else. So again, today, congratulations, girly. Thank you for jumping on. Congratulations. Today is the a founder and CEO of the Empowered Being Movement. And I am so excited and happy for her. She just recently got married. So each and every one of you that are on this live, listen, y'all go and, you know, comment back to Tanae. Tell her congratulations. Look up Empower Being as she is the CEO and the founder of the Empower Being Movement. Tanae and I are also working on a collaboration project. So we are super excited because one thing we realize is that it doesn't matter, you know, what similarities that we produce in our brand, but it's about really pushing the kingdom and building the kingdom of God. So we just, I appreciate you all for staying um, with us throughout this live broadcast. You know, I try to be done by 1030. It is 1037. So again, I love you all to life. And I just want to share, like, when you start where you stand, right, and you become intentional about just doing what God has called you to do, there is a creativity down on the inside of you that God will literally unlock, right? And I got to tell y'all, I designed my own tabletop step and repeat. And I was really impressed at how it turned out. So I'm going to just share that with you all. Listen, so it just says it has the logo. It has the tagline. It just says I'm a public speaker. I am an influencer. I am a life and career advocate. And I provide group and individual coaching. And then it has all of the social media platforms that you can connect with us. And again, it has Shea Speaks, that, tag, um, that um, it has that logo as well. So I was just impressed. Like, I, I made this, y'all. I designed this myself. So when you become intentional about starting where you stand, you will be surprised at what you can do when you just get to a place where you're just focused and you're just like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to let anything stand in the way of me moving to the next level, me actually pushing the vision that God has given me to upbuild his kingdom. So I, listen, y'all, I am Shay, just here to inspire the influencer and you. And listen, you are an influencer. You was called to do more than what you're currently settling for. If you are interested in purchasing and supporting the Wild Inspired Movement, purchasing a hat, a mug, a cup, a shirt, Whatever it is, um, we also have mouse pads. I did not bring them because Wild Inspired is also going to be looking to speak to companies and organizations about employee morale and just giving them some wisdom, um, giving the management team wisdom to understand how important it is to keep your employee morale up, to also increase the retention as well as to increase revenue. So I am here just to inspire the influencer in you. So we have mouse pads, we have hats, we have shirts, we have mugs. If you are interested in any product, please reach out to me. My website, um, the website is currently being worked on. And guess what? We are officially one week away, one week away from the book launch 
Breaking the Code of Silence book launch is next Saturday. Woo, 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 woo. For those that have pre-ordered their books, I promise you, when I touch down in town next Sunday, I will be delivering your autographed copy of the Breaking the Code of Silence Now book project. I am, listen, those that pre-order, I am going to try to get all of the co-authors to sign your book. I am. So if you have not pre-ordered your book, the book cost is $20. You can cash app it to me. You can get with me. I can meet you, whatever. Listen, you want to pre-order your books. I paid for some books up front to be able to have on hand. But once those books are gone, there will be a time um, span that you would have to wait to get your book. So yes, yes, yes. Miss Wolford, yes, I will make sure you get one. I will inbox it you. I seen you send me an inbox. I did not ignore it, but I will be getting back with you as soon as I get off of this live. Listen, you all, I really, really appreciate each and every one of you and all of the support that you have given me as I have been intentional about pushing the vision for the WOW Inspired Movement. So I just want to say even to those that have decided to travel to the book launch event next Saturday in Virginia. Listen, I had 19 seats. All 19 of them went so fast. I had been talking about it. People reached out like, I want to be in the room. I want to be there. I want to be there. And they have literally could take it up every seat. I wasn't even supposed to get 19 seats. But the favor of God, the blessings of God do it, make it rich and add of no sorrow. I am Shay here to inspire the influence in you. Have an amazing Saturday. Thank you, Elder Pritchett. Have an amazing Saturday. We are back on Wednesday night. And listen, be on the lookout for the next promotion on who will be on the Wow Inspired Movement. The Inspired to Inspire show. I love you all. Have an amazing Saturday. Thank you all for hanging in here with us as we were over our time today. Share this live out. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Listen, y'all need to go like and follow the Wow Inspire Movement because we are shifting, shaking, and movement. Moving. We are shifting. I love shifting. So when God said shifting with Shay Speaks, I was like, ooh, I love it. Because when you shift, everything that's surrounding you, everything connected to you, have to move as well. So listen, guys, I love you all to life. If you have an interest um, in being a special guest and coming on, sharing your story, reach out to me. I will pray about it. We will talk about it. And we will go over some things. God gives me the titles for or the topics for each of the lives. And I just ask my special guest to kind of speak to the topic. And we speak on the topic. And I'm just amazed at what's coming out of these conversations. Because we never know who is in need of the substance that we possess. Right? That we may help them to overcome whatever it is that they're going through. So again, WOW stands for Wisdom Optimizes Winning. We want your wisdom. We want your perspective. We want your input. I love you all. Have an amazing Saturday. On purpose.